Now, for inventory items that we repeatedly sell and restock, as I mentioned before, you can create inventory purchase orders. And it's a manner very similar to making your project-specific purchase orders, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. So let's uh, replenish our stock on, hmm, how about our iron cabinet poles, that is as an example. Go back to our stock items. There they are. Stock number HRD533, and that's our iron cabinet pole. And we can see that our reorder point is five, and I currently only have one on hand. So if I do sell these time and time again, that would certainly indicate to me that it might be a good time to order some more. To make an inventory purchase order, we go under the documents frame of our inventory tab and go to inventory POs. And our inventory purchase order window looks very similar to our project purchase order window. By default, we're only going to be showing existing inventory purchase orders that are not yet closed. And as an aside, unlike project purchase orders where you can define whether the project purchase order is closed by the recording of the vendor invoice, the receiving of the goods in full, or a combination of both, inventory purchase orders are always closed when both of those conditions are met. In other words, when we've recorded a vendor invoice, or in other words, purchased all of the items on the inventory purchase order and have indicated that all pieces are received, then Design Manager will automatically close them. So we can see that our purchase order for Bungalow 5 here has, was originally an $82 uh, purchase, and we've only uh, recorded $41. So it looks like half there. So that, to me, of course, would indicate that it should be open. If I wanted to see purchase orders that have already been closed, I simply uncheck the show open purchase orders only uh, option, and there they are. And we can see that these ones certainly have been paid in full, and I imagine they've been received in full since they are closed. On this window, we have very similar columns to our project purchase order window. The purchase order number, automatically generated by design manager, just a numerical value that increases from 10,000. The date of the order, whether or not it's open, the vendor code and name, the ship to code and name, the amount of the purchase order, any notes, deposit information that I may have sent, receiving information, acknowledgement number, balance due, and even any invoices that I have recorded so far will be listed in the actual vendor invoices paid along with the paid check information columns. To make a purchase order for our polls, we can just click our Add button. That gets us to our new inventory purchase order uh, items window. The date is defaulting to today's date, which is just fine. If I want to indicate that I want to purchase an item from inventory, I can click the Add button. And then I simply want to input the stock number, which I'm purchasing. And there's our iron cabinet poles, and I'm ready to go. Design Manager then fills in most of the information for me, including the description, the unit cost, the quantity. Well, if we look back on our inventory glossary, we can see for our iron cabinet poles, my unit cost is coming in, and the reorder quantity is defaulting as the quantity. And then our extended cost gets calculated for us. I could input freight. The side mark also would default from the inventory item if one was entered. The vendor is going to be the vendor uh, from the inventory item. The ship to defaults to the company information inventory tab, the default warehouse, as we saw before. And even our requested deposit information comes from our legacy antiques vendor themselves. I can also really use that reorder quantity um, to make my purchasing even easier by using the select items for purchasing button where I can select by reorder point. If I want to do bulk, um, get all items that are currently have a quantity on hand less than my reorder point, I could use this option and Design Manager would select them all for me. 
And we can see in this case, I have two of them that satisfy that. But we'll go ahead and select our knobs. Uh, I already have one on hand and I want to keep a par or a stable of uh, 10, so maybe I'll just get nine in this case. Add some freight. If I click OK, I have my item there. So you could enter your items manually or you could use your reorder point to really quickly select any item that has fallen beneath the desired threshold. If we click OK, we now get to our generated inventory purchase order window and we can preview and print the document. And There is our inventory item for our iron cabinet poles, the catalog, or in this case the uh, the catalog number. We have our reference number is the stock number. Our barcode is even shown for us. Cost, extended cost. I can print out a copy. Once everything is to my liking, I'm just going to accept our order. And there it is. And now we can see the effect back on our inventory stock item glossary. If we look back down at our iron cabinet poles, we can see our on order quantity has increased to nine. And there's further detail, of course, on that status adjustment tab, and we can see our PO transaction listed on our adjustments transactions grid as well. And that's what's increasing that on order value. Great purchase order. So we send that out to Legacy Antiques. They get the order going for us. And at some point in the near future, we're going to imagine that those cabinet pulls are going to arrive. And we need to record that receiving value into Design Manager. Entering receiving information for inventory purchase orders is critical to maintaining proper inventory accounting. This action is reflected immediately in the status of the item, and as you can see, it's going to automatically change uh, many of those um, any of those quantities automatically for us. And let's see how it does so. To record the receiving of the cabinet polls, we go back to our inventory purchase order window. We already have the purchase order in question highlighted, and here we want to click the receiving status or rec status button. This gets us to our inventory purchase order status window where we can put lots of uh, order tracking information in, such as the acknowledgement of the purchase order if desired. We can have notes upon the order. But for most important to our discussion right now, we can indicate that we truly received these polls. And to do that, click the edit button. We can put that information in. We can use today's date as the receive date. Uh, notice that my back order quantity is automatically defaulting to nine, but as soon as I input information into the quantity received, that updates automatically. Let's say I only got five uh, of the polls in, the back order quantity would also automatically update to four. But we'll receive them all in our case. Received in full. and we are ready to go. And now, when we click OK, let's see the effect of that receiving transaction on our cabinet polls. Go back to our stock items. Let's go down, and we can, right from our inventory stock item glossing window itself, I can see that our on order quantity has decreased to zero and yet our on hand has increased to 10. And that update in the totals is due to the receiving transaction that we just input. That receiving transaction increases the on hand quantity and decreases the on order quantity simultaneously.